We are in to our second game of the night, ladies and gentlemen. Kuyong Secondary get faring up, facing up against Fair Hills High School. I am Midnight. I am joined by Pokemon once again. Ten, less than 10 seconds in, a score is, and the score is made. Yeah, I think you need to um, well, figure out a way to get your introductions in in probably under three seconds or something. Yeah, figure out a way to do that. The old Tyler one, so you know how you can just like throw those promos out super quickly. Either way, though, that is Fair Hills on the orange side, getting a fast kickoff goal in this one. But absolutely, we are back for another best of five series here on the pitch. Again, it's Kunang on the blue side at Fair Hills in orange. Yeah, and run, battling head first. Fair Hills have scored themselves that first goal, but they're going to need to continue it. I'm seeing official dancing with the ball, able to get past two of the defenders, but the third is simply too much for him to dance around there. But Jinx missing the ball completely. That will slow down the offense coming out of Kuyo. I'm already getting a little bit nervous about this game. I'm not going to sugarcoat this one. I'm seeing awkward double commits, no communication, a couple unforced errors as well. This could be one of those sloppier games where really it's you know, a couple lucky hits, a couple good bounces. That could be the difference in this series. Yeah, well, we'll see how it goes there. A minute down, Fair Hills still with that one goal lead. Looking to try for something. As we see Sorito up in the air trying to find something, but the issue is that these sort of aerial solo angles that it looks like he's trying to drive forward just aren't going to work. Official on the counter attack, but not going to find anything. Yeah, I mean, Sorotino, he, he had a good touch on that one. It just needed to be a little bit more accurate. I liked that aspect of his play. What I didn't like was when he kind of got caught in no man's land immediately after. Good tight rotations from Will Black were actually able to steal the ball back. You, with the touch, gets the second touch as well. So, again, we're seeing the solo effort for the clears. Not too surprising considering, you know, the sort of ranks where we're at. This is high school. This isn't the big league. So, a lot of times these students like to rely on their individual effort, try to outmatch an opponent mono a mono and to set up the team within that facet. You going for it again off the wall gets the bump at the very least. So, I like the proactive thinking. Unfortunately, no one was able to follow up. Yeah, but there might be some follow up on the offense here. Fairhills have got a nice shot at 10, but you coming in the last second will hold the line and keep the game score. Where is that? But another follow through, and this one will work for Brand Bros. Yeah, so Fairhills are going to go ahead, get their second goal in this one, but turning the attention back to Kuning right now, something I'm noticing. Yes, there are three players on the team, but I do feel like it's a bit of a duo effort right now with you as well as Certino. Envy Jinx has just been kind of sitting in the box trying to play goalkeeper, and this is usually in the case of a player who might not be fully confident with their abilities at this stage. And again, there's skill levels in this tournament. Not everyone is a grand champ where there's people who have just picked up the game for the first time, and I'm thinking Envy Jinx might be closer to that end of the spectrum right now, so I'm curious to see how Kuning sort of play around this uh, in this facet where they're going to have to change their style a little bit or gameplay a little bit. Yeah, it's almost like a guy is like, oh yeah, you know, it's like car soccer. Well, I know how to play goalkeeper and soccer, problem solved, and you realize, oh wait, this game is so different like in every aspect than the regular, you know, the normal real life game. So, We'll see if he's able to be a bit more proactive as that attack coming at Envy, trying to help out, but just not able to get the connection on the ball, and Van Bro's on a counter-attack. Yeah, but I am seeing some things from MV Jinx as well. Like, they understand how to build momentum, so I'm sure, you know, their fellow teammates has been able to give him some tips on how to control the ball and the likes. I know I'm going to be rooting for MV Jinx a little bit more, because I, whenever I see a newer player at the game, I always want them to step up and perform, so... My eyes will be on them. Sorrentino going to slow down the pace, keep the ball in the corner right now. A double commit, players bumping into each other, means no one's across the middle to take the shot, and that is why you do not double commit in the corner when on offense. Yeah, but they were punished too heavily for though the counter from Bram Bros and Brent might be enough. Setting up a Bram in the air, not able to get the connection. A follow-through from Will, not really getting any solid connections either. But there's no counter-attack coming out here from Kuyong. They seem to be struggling to grasp them properly, even as we see there, you just trying to do it by himself. Well, again, part of that has to do, you know, uh, with one player who hasn't really made contact with the ball at all yet, and the other two, they haven't been able to get those good touches, although that could be breaking the curse. He doesn't quite get a rack around it before getting the goal in. That's okay. Official Branks, actually a terrible touch right there. Keeps the ball in the box. Envy, the one who can take the shot, does beat two defenders, but can't quite finish the deal, and then gets in his own teammate's way. No, that's not how you want to end that offensive play. Sorrentino going to try and recover, but loses possession off the roof. Yeah, one minute left on the clock, two goals in favor of Phil, and that's all that's been scored, but not from a lack of trying here. As we get followed through here, you might be able to get it. Yes, he does. Less than a minute, and there's only a goal that separates our two teams. 
So when you are stuck on defense for a majority of the game, those few opportunities where you think you might be able to push the ball forward, you're going to take those and sometimes be aggressive about it. You immediately recognizing that Fairheels didn't have a complete control of the ball, steps forward to try and steal it away and does so in the best way possible. One to two under a minute to go. Yeah, but there's still time to either recover this game if you're Kuyong or to ensure that it goes in your favor from the side of Fair Hills. All they've got to do is have really solid defense for the last 30 seconds of this game. Ambrose is trying to make sure he's in the right position. You up in the air, but not really getting the angle they're looking for. But 30 seconds, Q Yong, they've got to do something. What I'm liking from both you as well as Sertino is the fact that they are like trying to go for these tight offensive rotations to really sort of keep a fair oh, heels no. pin down. Great stop from you right there. I mean, it's a mix of, you know, time as well as sort of a better strategy. That said, 10 seconds remaining, will it be enough to get them into this overtime? That clear from Brent is making it look harder and harder. You and Sertino are going to have to move it up. They must have to do a pass over the Jinx, but Jinx is behind them as well. It cannot Good touch the game. But that's it, and we're going to go to overtime. What a play from you right there as we watch this replay. Just dribble, flick, and then go right over the top of the one defender. Fantastic zero-second goal, and all of a sudden, Kunang, they have life once more. Yeah, and that will bring them into this overtime here, but they're going to still have to make it work. Brambrose missing the ball here, but it shouldn't be too heavily punished here. Sorinto, like, he's in position to do something, but unless Envy can get an amazing shot through, oh. no, a little bit wide. But there could be more follow through here. A really bad flip, however, from Sorinto. Doesn't get <laughs> defense and just flying past the ball. Oh my goodness, everyone just taking swings and missing at it. Unfortunately, you, I don't think was expecting that. Had Paul to all the way back in defense. The double touch attempt nearly gets it in for official brinks. Instead, Will Blackwell's going to try and get the touch. An awkward miss from you, uncharacteristic. No one there to follow through. Going for the ground pitch, doesn't connect. Envy doesn't have boost to go to the sky. Cerrito does great touch, but it's slightly off target. Yeah, slightly off, but this constant onslaught coming out is brutally punishing and it's of two members as you is constantly back playing defense ensuring that this overtime is going to go in their favor it is slowing down their offense however so we'll have mm. to see if that becomes more punishing as this game continues and overtime topic is overtime clock is still clicking yeah, I mean, you brought up a really good point right there with the decision to pull you back definitely has sort of negated a lot of the offensive pressure that we saw towards the end of regulation in this one. And I'm not sure I agree with it. You're having more success playing aggressive, not playing defensively. And while, yes, you know, this is golden goal overtime, but you're not going to score unless Sarita really does something absolutely amazing. Now, Fairhills has been struggling to turn these into counterattacks, but I just feel like we'll have an extended overtime where eventually one of these teams will break, where I want to see Kunang take a bit more of an aggressive role and try and end the game on their terms. Yeah, but so far, Kunang, I mean, that had been quite oh. defensive ball going across. That's Ooh. dangerous, but you is able to keep it safe for now. And is now saying, you know what, offense is my opening here, trying to dance it around the ball, not able to get the solid connection, and Brett now on a counterattack. Yeah, and even in situations like this, I'd almost question maybe send you to be the one to attacking because you can see when he pushes the ball down the pitch, he is getting a lot more accurate than Sertino has been. I mean, we saw that with that goal to take us into overtime. Maybe just swap those roles because Sertino definitely is mechanically skilled enough oh, on no. defense. And as I say that, he misses. Are you kidding me? Fairhills takes it in overtime. The caster curse coming in here, and this is heartbreaking. He just did not have the angle that he was hoping for, and that will be Fairhills grabbing themselves the first game in this series. I, you know, I wanted to apologize to the Kunain squad for dropping one of the most malicious uh, caster curses I think I have ever, you know, enchanted on a player. That... You can't, that was actually unbelievable. Just, yeah, Sartino, he'll be fine back on defense. And he couldn't have timed that bad. That was... That was I, but, you know, until that point, he had been. That was his first serious unforced error, and it happens in the overtime at just, like, the least opportune moment. Uh, it was... It is what it is, but credit where credit is due to this Fairhill side. For the most part, they are playing, you know 
pretty solid defensively. They've been able to organize a couple counterattacks. Um, in particular, you know, when a player whiffs, they've just been able to drive through and punish incredibly quickly. We saw that in the overtime. We saw that's how they kind of got, you know, their first goals just off of kickoffs. One player would miss, and then they'd be able to bang it through. So Fairhills definitely is playing in a fashion where if Kuneng makes one or two mistakes, it's going to be a goal. They're fast enough and accurate enough in that regard. Uh, that said, from the Fairhill side, I am worried when they get on defense. Their touches haven't been the best. It's been a bit scrambly. I do think they can clean things up a little bit more. But when you're one game up, you have more time to sort of get your team cohesion together. Yeah, and you've got that momentum coming in for Fairhills as well. You've gotten yourself a game advantage. You can now push it up against your opponents. And if you're on the side of Kuyong, you've got to be like, well, we're game down. We've got to actually be a lot more safe coming in here as the second game is about to kick off. We'll see, can any team grab themselves an early advantage once again? Bambrose trying to force this one through. A very odd flip, though, loses him the ball. Yeah, that's uh, not what you want to see. Very fortunate there that no one was able to punish him on this one, but we are seeing a Kuneng attack, and official Branks is driving the ball right into the box. That does force Bambrose to use his boost to try to get a touch. Fortunately, he actually gets the pass to Will Blackwell. I'm starting to see more team play coming from this Fair Hill size. That's what I want. That's how you typically win these series, building that synergy and then acting upon it. However, when you triple commit to a corner, well, that's how you throw away all of your advantages. Yeah, they've got to be a little more. Maybe communication it needs to be shared around a little bit more. You've got to talk to each other, guys, out there during this game. As Sorrentino trying to push the ball forwards, but I don't see him getting past official that easily. So maybe the offense dying out for Kuyong Jinx is just not going to be able to get in the air. And you, oh, I was going to say you had to play defense, but the connection there coming out of Kuyong slows down the offense entirely. Yeah, very fortunate as well because Jinx just completely cleaned up Sortino with that attempt. However, Slow playing it in the corner right now. Typically, Fairhills has actually been pretty solid in this. As you can see right there, you know, rotating through the mid pitch. Next member up, although no one behind the third member. A little bit of a slow rotation right there, but that does bait the defense forward. So nearly making it work, Fairhills, with a deeper rotation than what is to be expected. Breaks now going to play a little bit of setup into the box. He goes. He had the speed, but did not have the accuracy or the ability to adjust on that shot, I should say. Sorrentino with the punish misses at the end. You is able to redirect it. That's going to go over the top, and it's 1-0 in favor of Kune. Yeah, and look at this onslaught here. Sorrentino pulls out one defense, and then he flips it over. Official's too close, and Brown doesn't have the time to recover before it simply goes over his head and goes in. Yeah, so that's a great goal right there for this blue side off of the counterattack. And I think we're going to be seeing a lot more of that as we progress in this series. Uh, considering especially the fact that Kuneng, you know, they like to go for these individual plays. When you do so, you either make something amazing happen or, you know, you bait your own team up and you sort of force over commits. Situations like that, I've been noticing a lot of it right now. I think the team that has a faster counterattack is probably going to force more opportunities for themselves. And they're going to be the one that wins this series. So... Think less about the initial setups in these, but think how these setups are going to be punished. That's where a majority of the goals are going to be coming from. Well, we'll see a three-man attack coming in from Sarito Yu and Envy now coming out. Will it be enough? The dance is over into the box, but official with a nice clear will give them some room. But Yu doesn't look like he's done with it yet. Trying to play up in the air, but Sarito actually misses the ball, and this could slow down everything. Yeah, but unfortunately, Brambro wasn't fast enough on the punish. That could have been an opening for sure for Fairhills, but no wasn't right. able to make contact with it. And this is what no! I mean. It's all about the punish. You push too many people far forward trying to find that counterattack, and you just find the goal scored right back against you. And Wonderful no, pinch from no Sortino. Goal. It bounces off the official break and goes back in. Oh, that's going to be heartbreaking for an official. Tries to block and ends up being the reason it works. I mean, yes, that's unfortunate. I, I think I've seen more egregious own goals already today, to be perfectly honest. But um, as a whole, that one was not the best look. Yeah, it, heartbreaking there. But he was up in the air trying to fight it off there. And he will become back of a vengeance. So we'll see if Kuyong are going to be able to keep them down. Because Fails in game two are struggling to really do anything. They felt like they were just kicked it off on the back foot and just haven't been able to grab the ball. Yeah, I mean, again, they've just a couple times have gone for, like, you know, plays where it looks like they'll have a breakaway. They'll push a couple cars forward. They'll have an unforced error where they miss the ball entirely. And then Kuneng is there to punish. That's kind of been how both of these goals has essentially happened. And it's why I'm going to that point before, where it's been all about the counterattack, really, in this series thus far and taking advantage of an opening. And once again, you know, a double commit, two cars push too far forward. Official breaks this, I'm able to corral it, but 
These are scary situations right now for Fairhue. Mm. But they need to be able to A, recover, and B, actually get on the offense. Because if you play defense all game, well, surprise, surprise, you're not actually going to win. As that other mid could be used, but no one was in position as Envy's Jinx trying to do something. just can't get the angles he's looking for. And this is a problem as well right now for Feyholtz, because once again, Yu has kind of dropped back to that heavy defensive position. That's okay, though. Bambros is going to find that angle and score on them. I was about to say I'm a little bit worried about this because with you playing so far back, it's going to be that much harder to find the goals. However, if you can just outplay him, well, point's yours. Yeah, just outplay them. How hard can it be, Formal? Uh, we just saw. Yeah, exactly. Nice easy goal. That does put Fairhills one goal down. And oh, a lovely, lovely last second save from you does keep it that way. But things are going to be very aggressive as there is one minute left on the clock here. Fairhills have got to start getting something out of it. Yeah, absolutely. They do have possession of the ball. Good flick to get past the first attacker, but can't quite get past the second one. And here's Big U. He actually stops and hesitates. Fortunately, though, for this Kuneng side, that did force the miss out of Fairhills, although official Brace just put a banger of a shot on target. And with 40 seconds remaining, we are tied. That was a beautiful aerial shot there out of official. And we see the defense just didn't get the angling right. And so Surin so was like, ah, oh, misses up just a little bit there. Draws it up with 40 seconds to go. Fairhills have been on a rampage in these last couple of minutes. And the onslaught is probably not over yet. No, it might not be a tie game right now. Good job by Fairhills for just finding more consistent touches to bring themselves back in it. And they're in a position to possibly score again. Brandon, what the whoa! All right, well, scary situation across the board right now. I don't know how that ball didn't go in, but I don't even know why it was even going to be going in just because of the touches right there. Shot! No, miss! How do you miss that one, Brambros? He's going to want that back. Yeah, going to want that one back, but will it be enough? The ball is actually going on the other side. Official is able to hold the defense. Ten seconds remaining here. We might get to overtime. Maybe, though, because the offenses aren't done just yet. This last minute has been insanely aggressive. Official's trying to do something, but it's not going to work, and we hit overtime for our second game. Yeah, two overtimes in a row, and the same scoreline for each of them, although this time the roles are kind of reversed. It's actually been Fairheels making the comeback against Kuning. Let's see if that momentum will continue through. At the moment, Fairheels does win that kickoff, does get that initial offensive pressure, but as per usual, they push too far forward and leave themselves open to a counterattack, which we're seeing right now. Watch for shorting, but more importantly, watch for you. He should be pushing forward right now, but he misses. Open net. No, Will Backwell can't recover in time, but it doesn't matter. He gets the touch and gets the Goal. Envy was not able to get in the position he needed to after you messed it. He left in the last man guarding and just didn't slow down. And that's going to go in and that will put Fairhills at a 2-0 lead. One win away from taking a clean 3-0 series. Oh, that one was got to be heartbreaking right there for Kuneng. I mean, they started off so strong, but they're running into similar problems that I saw in game number one, in particular you. We know mechanically he's a super strong player, but we're starting to see him play more and more passively as the series progresses. Like, when they have that lead, instead of, you know, keeping up that same play style that has them get that lead to begin with he starts playing defensively he starts playing reactionary and i don't know if it's a case of nerves or just thinking you know because we have the lead we can play defense and win it but that hasn't worked now two games in a row so it's now time to mix it up i think you should continue to try and play aggressive i want to see him challenge a bit more i still feel he's the fastest player on this pitch so my eyes are going to be on him on the fairhill side however slow start but those touches started to come through. Specifically, I liked the individual performance out of official Brinks. Uh, he started off a couple unforced errors, one of which I do believe actually costed the team the goal. But by the second half of that game, every touch he had was an absolute cracker of a shot, always putting the ball in the right position, and the team was able to follow through and play around him. So very interesting series thus far. It can still go either way, but I think when you're up 2-0, two, two overtimes, the mental, definitely in Fairhill's advantage. Oh, it has to be in Fairhill's advantage, the fact that they've gotten themselves this lead. You can't build a 2-0 lead and be like, oh, no, nah, we can't do anything here. And the fact that this lead, they always seem to be struggling at the mid and early game, and then they take over in those last couple of minutes. So, I, I really think it's not, it's, I'm sure it's not something you want to plan around. It's like, oh, yeah, let's fall behind early and then hop in, we'll be good to go. Like, no, but it's the way these games are playing out, which is just so chaotic, yet so exciting to watch. 
Yeah, absolutely. I think both these teams do have small problems when communication breaks out and that ball is in that danger spot. Each side has just been like seen to flail around and desperately try to clear it out. Uh, you know, it happens sometimes like that. And unfortunately, I do feel as if Kunang in those situations, they've been a little bit more erratic and they haven't been able to clear it and turn it back around. So I just feel Kunang needs to calm down and recognize, you know what, mechanically, we probably might still be the better team. So let's just sort of play act it. Let's act like it. It's not 2-0 right now. It's a 0-0 game. And the reverse sweep, it starts right now. Yeah, the first steps forward for that reverse sweep are important, but they need to get done. So hopefully we'll be diving into the... <clears throat> hopefully diving into our third game here. Where again, we kind of expect Kuyong secondary to fight back. They've shown moments of brilliance. Hell, they've been in the lead at some point during both of the games we've had today. So yep. they just need to find the openings that are going to work for them and then dive forwards, take the game by the throat, and don't allow Fairhills to counterattack. Well, that's just it. Don't allow the counterattack or don't allow them to attack and continue to play that aggressive style, those tight rotations that are giving you the lead in the first place. Don't abandon them just because you think, okay, now we have the lead, we can play passive and hold on. That's not working, and it hasn't worked two games in a row. So I do believe they can do it. Uh, I mean, I, it, it's just, again, that mental aspect of it all. It, it is hard to sort of, how should I put this? Like expect, you know, top tier mental game. Um, in a league such as this and in situations such as this because this is a high school league I mean these are students a lot of them playing for fun They're playing to build teamwork communication skills. They're building to learn how to handle um, Those high-pressure situations. So the expectation shouldn't be like expecting perfection from them uh, So when I'm saying these things like they need to calm it down They need to sort of play a bit more reserved I am by no means condemning them for having this change in play style letting the nerves affect them in this manner but if you want those high level results, if you want to keep that consistent performance, that's the area that these players need to work on. Yeah, and we'll see that hopefully coming into our third series. And again, it's like when these players sign up for these, I'm sure the first thought they have is, okay, let's just go into this and have a bit of fun. <laughs> so we'll see how that is for them. Because like, I'm sure there are some teams that come into this with the intention of, okay, we want to make it as far as we can. We want to go yeah. you know, big. But then there are other ones where it's just like, hey, me and my friends will play this game. Let's do it. Yeah, I, I can I can think of um, three players off the top of my head right now that I'm just going to say that are probably signed up and in this one just to show off how good they are and to try and crush uh, other schools that they might feel are beneath them. I'm not going to name names, but I'm going to say like all three of the ones I'm thinking of, I'm pretty sure they're all from New Zealand. So uh, that's just a thought right there. Shout out if you know who I am on about right now. I digress. Uh, we still have some more games to go. Uh, I, hopefully, we will be kicking this off again. The players are jumping back in. Yeah, we're having a few uh, issues that will slow down the games. But coming in to the third game of this series formal, the biggest thing that worries me is we're seeing a lot of uh, almost a lack of communication coming in from some of these teams and almost panic at quite a few points as well. So for this third game, do you think the teams just need to maybe take a step back and be like, okay, yes, things might get chaotic, but we need to take it slowly or is it more of a just keep the offense running as much as we can? I think we've seen what happened when Kuning has tried to take the game slowly. <laughs> and I think that should be my answer right there. Like, just because you have a lead, again, does not mean you should let up. And I, I, I don't want to keep emphasizing that point, that similar point right now. But that's sort of where we are at, especially in the game like this, where it's been very much an individual game. Uh, less pass play, less team play. It's more about getting those good touches and then trying to fall through. I can't, okay, the next player. Pretty standard rotations from... Both teams. Fair Hills, I actually have seen pass the ball a fair bit more than Kuning and try and go for these team play setups. So I do like that from them. I hope they continue to do that, especially if Kuning's going to continue with this sort of man up, one on one style, both of offense and defense. Being able to get a good pass and cross up that sort of approach will open so many more doors and so many more opportunities for them. So I'm hoping Fair Hills can continue to do that and try and go for those team plays, even though they haven't had the best success rate for them. That is how you elevate your gameplay and team play as a whole yeah well guys there are unfortunately a few tech issues that are slowing us down right now we should be hopping into the third game of our Kyung secondary versus Fairhill series so far but don't go anywhere we're back and hopefully only a matter of minutes to before we dive into our game <laughs>
we are into our third game here. Kuyong Secondary and Fairhills are throwing themselves in. Remember, Fairhills are already up 2-0 in this series, looking to try and close it out. But for now, at least, they're actually playing the defensive side of this matchup. Yeah, they are at the moment, although a great touch by Brinks right there is going to turn that right back around. Fairfield's looking for that first touch. Will Blackwell in a good spot. Doesn't get it in. A triple commit. All three cars in the goal. A free counterattack, but no, Kunan gets in their own way, and they're unable to get the score. That is heartbreaking. Too many chefs in the kitchen is what we're seeing there. Not able to make it work. And now the... <laughs> Um, it's a matter of, oh, let's go, let's go, let's go. And then oh. you realize, like, we haven't got the maneuver oh, no. <laughs> And that right there, you know, teammates running into each other, don't rotate next or underneath the ball shot from you. How does he miss that? It was an open net, and he had been so good so far in this series. It leads to a counterattack right now from Fairhills Bambros. Going to try to set up. Will Blackwell went for the bump, and I don't really know what Brex was doing as he kind of just fell from the sky. Very much a chaotic game right now. This is feeling very much like, you know, your normal ranked ladder game at this stage. Yeah, you got to throw yourself forward. You got to be getting in there, Formal. That's how you do this. <laughs> so when the things are getting chaotic, you just drive as fast as you can in the forward direction, and it will work itself out, hopefully. As well, okay, you stay in. Oh, over the goal. He might be able to No, doesn't get it. Envy getting in the way. The follow-through isn't going to connect either. Three minutes in. It's been a bloodthirsty game, but no goal. You say, you know, drive forward, but Bram um, Brambros set that play up driving in reverse. I just want to point that out there, okay? So sometimes, you know, you can go backwards to push it forwards as well. I digress. Brambros actually a bit of a breakaway right now. Going to go for the corner setup. Doesn't quite get the ball far enough out of the box through the setup, so won't see that shot. Again, members of Fairhills just cleaning each other up at this stage. Sortino takes a shot, but... Swings and misses. Brambros actually doesn't want to contest, so you, with plenty of space to work with, is going to go ahead and go for a pass play. There we go. Starting to see Kuneng actually pass the ball around and open the door for Satino, but he wasn't able to finish. Yeah, not able to finish in this situation. The defense, I, I said the defense seems to be a bit stronger, but the offense is just scrapping your teammates, pushing each other around. Yeah, okay, when I, when I said, you know, let's get more aggressive, let's try and make plays, this isn't quite what I meant. I was expecting, you know, steal your same organized rotations, but tightening them up a bit, not giving your opponent space to put the ball where they want. Instead, this is kind of just turned into full ball chasing at that Sorrentino. If he gets that next touch, that's a goal. You can see what he was going for, just unable to finish it. You still going to push it forward himself, opening the door for himself. Rex is just going to yeet him out of that situation, and Brambro slows the pace down in the corner. I mean, if you could drive fast, well, why wouldn't you drive fast? We're seeing official trying to get around two defenders. The first will stop him here. But, oh, no. Memro's missing the ball. He's going to hit the damn thing. And the third time is the charm for Will as he's able to rotate the ball three times thanks to some help from Kune and clearing each other out. And, okay, yep, there we go. Brinks just bumping Bramboros backwards into the ball. Now Will's going to go up for it. Doesn't have the boost. Jumps way too late. Bram, though, will keep that offensive pressure on. What is going on this game? It felt like, you know, two games, maybe not the highest level, but it was still controlled Rocket League, and this one's just gone completely off the walls. It's the, it's the idea formal of if you could be aggressive, why wouldn't you be aggressive is what we're seeing here. Both the teams have decided, yeah, with tactical work. Rambo's going in the follow through. No, not going to work. The defense come in. And there are five people in the goals. Five people in the goal. The only one not in the goal was Brambrose, who's the person who put the most accurate shot on it. You now going to try and set himself up. Has the boost, but a great read off the backboard by official Brex in order to stop it from now. Ball in dangerous spot. Nearly own goals and said uses the post to clear will. No boost to work with, but still forces two defenders to go flying and miss. Brex doesn't steal the ball away from his teammate, who instead throws it now backwards back towards his own goal. Yeah, and the first demo is somehow only coming out with one minute left on the clock. This has been utter chaos, utter onslaught here, but it's not again. It's right in front of the goal, you can get it, no! Are you kidding me? <laughs> what? I, I, okay, you know, look, this is uh, Rocket League, ladies and gentlemen. This is Rocket League. <laughs> this is chaos is what this is, for, and I love every second of it. As we're seeing an attack coming out of Q-Yong, they might be able to get it. No, no, the defense in the last possible second, and there's no... I can't anymore. How am I supposed to analyze this?
Yes, this is just ball chasing, take it to the next level shot, almost on target, Sortino able to make the save, and these teams, these players, they just need to calm down right now, make contact with the ball at least if you're going to be chasing it, okay, Will again underneath it, one second remaining, I think we're going to a 0-0 zero, zero overtime. Oh, we're definitely going to a 0-0 zero, zero overtime here, Formal, in, what? in one of the most chaotic games I have ever seen in my life right now, kickoff time, it's going right for the what? Oh my goodness, it will! Overtime ends three seconds after the beginning! Of course! Of course we go five minutes no goal only to have one score three minutes into one overtime even though it was a cheat the cheat has nothing to do with the goal as Branks is able to catch the ball himself off of the roof Fairhill wins three games to zero that okay the first two games we saw tactics we saw strategy on, on how to tackle the ball and we saw some really oh. fantastic teamwork coming out of both teams Game three it looked like that is like screw it, ball, 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 ball. And it was just like a hunting pack coming out of them. That third game probably was one of the, my favorite games of Rocket League I have cast in a long time. So many near misses, so many exciting plays. Was it clean Rocket League? No. No, no, it was not. In fact, I'm not even sure it was Rocket League. That was, you know. I, I, this is going to sound a little harsh, but just hear me out here. That was primary school soccer where everyone is just chasing the ball and they're happy when they get a good kick. Does it go in the goal? Yeah, sometimes, maybe. Actually, not really. Not till overtime. But everyone was just chasing after it, just speeding at it. You could tell probably they were having fun just driving around, smacking it when they could, smacking their own team when they could as well. It was chaotic, but it was a good time. As it stands, though, Fairhills, you know, throughout the first two games in that series did prove to be the better team. Uh, I think they definitely do deserve that victory, but my goodness, I'm not going to forget that Game 3 for a long time. No, that was a bangers of a game there, and it's a little bit heartbreaking to say, Formal, but unfortunately, that's also the final game we have for today and this week of Meta. Yeah, that's going to do it for Week 6 here. It's been, an, again, another great treat. 2-3-0 uh, victories, not necessarily, you know, the length of the gameplay that we want, but it definitely was exciting enough. Yeah, and on that note, guys, thank you, everybody, for joining us throughout the course of the entire day. Of course, both best of three series that did end up going to a 3-0 there. Uh, thank you, Formal, for joining me on yeah. our, uh, I don't know much a desk, but definitely a fun time today. And on that note, guys, thanks very much for joining us for week six of Mesa, and we'll see you for week seven.